Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. I, I think we're ready. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Come on, God is good. Come on, and he's everlasting to everlasting. And we just want to lift up the song of worship. As we echo heaven in our worship and in our praise. Hallelujah. Be 
of Chicago. We thank God that God is on every side. Can the church say amen? West, south, east, and north. We thank God for everybody that's here in the house of the Lord. We also want to welcome any one of our visitors. Any visitors out there, we definitely welcome you at the bridge. Because at the bridge, you will get fed. There's not only place we get soul food, but you get what? Food for the soul. Anybody hungry for the Lord? Come on, I know some hungry people out there. Come on, give God some praise. For all of you all who may be out there in Facebook Live, you all may be seated, as well as those maybe on a phone conference or, or those right here uh, in person, we definitely uh, welcome you here at the bread. And please feel free to give us a call if you have any questions in regards to uh, the God we worship, uh, the services that we give, questions you may have, prayer requests you may want to share, please uh, uh, call us at the number 770. 773-778-4121 773-778-4121 and also I want to thank God for the privilege of being able to serve as leader here at Bread of Life for 12 years we thank God I thank God thank God for Bread of Life and how he has shown my family and how I love come on we want to give God some praise how he has brought us uh, together for such a time as this and I stand on some great shoulders. I think about Pastor uh, Arthur Porter, uh, who's in glory right now, the first pastor of this church, and then my second pastor, Pastor Leon Johnson, who came out of retirement here in Chicago and made his way down in Florida. We thank God for those strong shoulders. Come on, show some love. We thank God for those who have, have laid the foundation and many who have come to faith under their leadership. Come on, anybody out here that came to faith under their leadership? Come on, give God some praise and how he has moved and steadily moving through us uh, over these 50 years. And we thank God uh, for the 12 years. I actually preached my first sermon as pastor on uh, uh, July 4th, 2009, but I could not compete with the birth of the country. <laughs> And the anniversary of the country, and so we want to make sure we give honor where honor is due, and then uh, we decided to postpone and make our celebration uh, the first uh, Sunday in August. So thank God for all of you all who are with us and the relationship that have come forth over the years, and we know that the work that God has begun in us, He will what? He will finish it unto the day of Christ Jesus. Anybody believe that? Come on, give God some praise by faith on credit. And he is faithful to do what he said he would do. And so I always want to just acknowledge a few names on Facebook Live. Just call you out. I see Gwendolyn Johnson. Can we just show some love? We're in the virtual fellowship hall. Is that all right? <laughs> we're, we're, we're in the uh, foyer. So we want to show some love uh, for Linda Taylor. Come on, give God some praise. Sandra Dix is out there. Facebook Live. Busy Sanders. Come on, give God some praise. Uh, Erica Robinson, you were here and there. <laughs> Two places at once. <laughs> we thank God for uh, Rosie Sykes Tallward. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, make some noise out there. Uh, Clinty Clear, we want to bless the Lord for you. Uh, we thank the Lord for so many. Anna Marie Simpson, we bless the Lord for each and every person that has given us the privilege and honor to minister unto you. And we believe that God is able to edify you through us as we all glorify God together. Can the church say amen? So thank you. Maybe now put our hands together for Evangelist Trace as she come and share announcements with us. Amen. Amen. amen.
844-455-8455 at 9 a.m. each Sunday. And use the same conference call information for Sunday morning worship at 10.50 a.m. and on Wednesdays for Bible study at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Use Sunday school class dial 646-749-3112. Then enter access code 231-807-013 at 9 a.m. each Sunday. Worship service is streaming Sunday at 10.50 a.m. via Facebook Live on the Bread of Life page. If you are worshiping with us via Facebook Live, please share this service with family and friends and share your prayer requests in the comment section of Bread of Life's page. Yeah. Men's ministry, woo woo! All the men say woo woo! They will celebrate their men's ministry on Saturday, August 7th at 8 o'clock here at the church. See Brothers Harold Warner or Kuchami Myhan for details. Jazzy ladies and gents, senior ministry who are ages 55 years young and older. If that's you, say, that's me. That's me. All right. <laughs> we'll also meet Saturday, August 7th at 12 noon. Contact Sister Judy Hammock at 312-287-0320 for more information. On Saturday, August 21st is our community appreciation event, and every member is invited to come out and show your community how much we share, we support and love them. Sunday, August 22nd at 10.50 a.m. is our Usher and Nurses anniversary. And then another one of Dr. Sutton's brothers from another mother is Pastor Felix Beard of New Joy, who will deliver the message on that day. Let us come and support our doorkeepers and caregivers for Christ. Say Jubilee! and visitor to sow a seed of $200. With your help, we have raised $16,000 and are just $15,000 away from paying for the marquee in full. The marquee is ordered and will make a fine addition to our beautiful edifice, but we cannot do this without you. Wow. If you are unable to sow $200, please sow whatever you're compelled to give by texting BOL Chicago to 77977 on your cell phone or via pushpay.com by selecting the 50th celebration tag or mail a check or money order to Bread of Life Church, 1924 West 63rd Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60636. And for the Jubilee celebration, we will showcase the Bread of like church family tree and invite all members, current and former, to submit one family photo to special events, bol at gmail.com or via U.S. mail to the attention of Sister Brenda Jordan at Bread of Life Church, 1924 West 63rd Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60636. Please label your picture so that it may be returned to you after the celebration. We'll also have a souvenir book and are asking members, ministries, family, friends, and visitors to place a personal ad in our celebration booklet. The cost for placing ads are as follows. Full page $100, half page $50, and a quarter of a page is just $25. So your seat by texting BOL Chicago to 77977 on your cell or through pushpay.com by choosing Add 50th anniversary tab or send a check or money order to Red of Life Church, 1924 West 63rd Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60636. Please submit your ad to a King Forbes as soon as possible so that we can put the book into production. We'll also have, oh, excuse me, lost my place. And also submit your ad to BOLTurns50 at gmail.com so that we may allot ample time for production purposes. Payment for the ads are due August 31st. On Sunday, October 17th, we will climax our anniversary with lunch after the morning worship. Say free! Free! It's free to everyone who comes out and celebrate with us on that particular day. Thank you all so much for your
your visits, sex messages, and get well wishes. It made my hospital stay easier and more pleasant. Love and appreciate my church family. Thank you so much, Sister Judy Sanders. It is now time for our offering, and the Bible says the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Honor the Lord with thy wealth, and with the first fruits of all your crops. Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and an offering. He says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not go open the floodgates of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. Give, and he'll give it back to you. Press down, shake it together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that he meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. For God loves a cheerful giver. You say, well, how may I give? Members who are presently here in the sanctuary, please see Deacon Hawkins. If you're joining us online or by audio, you may give your tithes and offering by texting BOL Chicago to 77977 on your cell phone or online at pushpay.com or send a check on my order to the church to Bread of Life Church, 1924 West 63rd Street in Chicago, Illinois, 60636. Pastor? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise as you all can see there's much happening at Bread of Life. Even, come on, we can do better than that. Even in the midst of the pandemic, anybody believe and know that God is even able to be used pandemic to bring him glory. Anybody believe and know that God can still move and work out everything for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose even in the midst of the pandemic? Can anybody just give God some praise just because he's worthy to be praised? Anybody believe and know these words? I need just wave your hand. I need just to say, God, you're good all the time. All the time, you're good. Come on, give God some good praise. We are actually excited what he's doing in the midst of us. And as the praise team, I want to continue to lead us in worship. I just want to acknowledge and say there is a preacher in the house. We want to thank God for this man uh, of God and woman of God. Come on, we give God some praise for Pastor James Blair and Elder Peter Blair. Come on, give God some praise for them. I'm telling you, they get their worship on on the west side. We made our way out there on uh, last week as they celebrate 10 years in ministry as well as 10 years of, of ministry and, and, and able ministry on the west side of Chicago. Come on, give God some praise. And, and I'm telling you, God is in a beautiful work of business. I know he kept the able ministry uh, church during the pandemic. Folks had to come to Christ even during the pandemic. Anybody believe that God is still in the same folks? Even in the midst of these hard and challenging times, and, and I want to uh, make sure that I give the proper introduction to this man of God, uh, Pastor James Blair, has been a faithful member of Progressive Life Giving Word uh, Cathedral uh, for over 25 years, where he sat under the leadership and the teaching of Apostle Donald L. Alford. Pastor Blair has been working in the ministry for over 20 years. Some uh, of his areas of service have been uh, 15 years of service as a leader over the tender, loving care ministry where he was committed to 25 workers, which he provided personal touch to the new members. He has done countless hours of premarital and marital counseling and seen love grow stronger. I didn't even marry folks out there who are happily married. Thank God for their spouses. We thank God for him who ministered to so many couples, uh, for them to come back together through the power of God and his willingness to lend an ear and present and present the word of God to them. Pastor James Blair served in various areas of outreach uh, ministry by visiting the homeless shelters for men and women as well as visiting the prisons and juvenile detention centers. God called Pastor Blair to step out on faith 10 years ago and start his own church called Able. God is Able Ministry. Able Ministry's mission is to reach individuals in every phase of their lives. Pastor Blair has a passion for souls and willing to reach the lost at any cost. His faith in God is tried and true. His commitment to the kingdom is undeniable. He is a true servant of yeah. God and excited about the growth and development with individuals he comes in contact with. If you ever check out his Facebook page, Abel Ministries uh, page, you see where they get their worship on and folks are steadily getting saved. So we thank God for how he's moving. His favorite scripture is when I am lifted up, the 
is what Jesus said. From the earth I will draw all men unto myself. Uh, and so we thank God for Pastor Blair. Why don't you put your hands together? Come on, give God some praise. Give God praise to the Lord. We'll use them in a mighty, mighty way. So after the praise team, the next voice we hear with that of Pastor James Blair. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you know that the Lord is good? Come on, can I get a witness? Come on, come on. Somebody just testify real fast. Lord, you're good. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Come on, we just want to lift up this love song unto the Lord. And if you know it, don't be ashamed. Sing along with us. Even if you're all key, I get all key sometimes myself. <laughs>
store and all the things that I've been through. Oh, you can feel my pain and what I had to go through to get here. church. Yeah. Amen. I say this church. Yes. 
but he'd been shepherding even when he was working at CTA. Come on, yeah. He was transporting people to their destination or their location. But he transformed from the CTA to shepherdship, and he still had the same vision to transport and to deliver your soul to the right destination, which is eternal life. And so there was preparation even while he was a CTA driver. He was just transporting people, now he's transporting souls to the kingdom of God. So I thank God for my friend and my brother, Pastor Dr. David Sutton. There is a word, and he came with us on last week, him and his beautiful wife, and uh, the McFadden family, they came as well, and they celebrated uh, 10 years of me pastoring able ministry. Amen. Amen. So I thank God. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ to the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us into all truth. Thank God for the woman of God being by my side for 27 years. First lady, see the elder and the prayer. Amen. To all the clergy that is here on uh, this morning, there is a word coming from the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter, verse 21. Can we stand as we read the word of God? Thank you, Prophet Dana, for ministering me. My worship is for real. Yeah. The Bible speaks about, and it notes here, that Matthew 25 and 21, His Lord said unto him, Well done, mm-hmm. Dr. David Sutton. Yeah. Thou good and faithful servant. Uh-huh. Thou hast been faithful to the bread of life for many few things. But because of your faithfulness, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy kingdom. Take your seats. We'll take for a subject. You are graced for this. You are graced for this. Yeah. The struggle, the preparation, and the pain of being a good shepherd. Uh-huh. The preparation is making ready for something done to get or ready or something that is planning. Uh-huh. Uh, when I went into his office, he was already uh, uh, doing a Sunday school over the phone with some members of the church. Come on. There's preparation. He was still ministering even before service starts. Mm -hmm. And there's the struggle uh, dealing with the call. Uh, It's the effort to free from something or it's a fight. Uh, When we're talking about shepherding Uh and pastoring, this man been doing for 12 years, there's a struggle with the call. There's something uh, with the call that that sometimes we don't feel like pastoring. Come on, come on. Sometimes we feel we don't feel like we feel like being on the beach. Come on, yeah. With our toes in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Every Sunday he's here. Doing the midweek he's here. Yeah. Time. There's a struggle during the week he's here and ministering and dealing with marital folks and dealing with hard-haired church folks. <laughs> Somebody need to talk back to me. There's the, the struggle, preparation, and there's the pain. The pain is the suffering that the congregation doesn't see. His wife see it, but the congregation doesn't. It sometimes calls illness and is an agony and there's a suffering physically and sometimes mentally uh, dealing with the call. Mm. And so you are dealing with the struggle, the pain, and the preparation, but the Lord sent me here to tell you that you are graced for this. Mm. 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 You are graced for Mm. this. 
Mm. In this particular parable of the mm. talents, the Lord tells the two faithful servants uh, he used that they had been given to increase the master's wealth. And when the master returned from a long absence, uh, he rewarded the two faithful servants. But there was three. Someone said there was three. Uh, uh -huh. But every Christian alone to hear those words from Jesus, look, someday we will enter into heaven. But sometimes uh, uh, if you don't listen, uh, you won't be able to get to your destination. Mm, right. And so we, we, we faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I want to deal with this servant because a servant uh, 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 is something that takes humility. As the Bible says, Mariah, that we have to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt us in due season. Mm. And there is a fifth season, which is the due season that shepherds have to go through. Mm. Uh, we got to go through the fourth season to mm. get to the fifth season. Uh -huh. And so we are stealing with a, a gift and a talent that God has given the man of God. And what do you do with your gift? Uh, uh, do you use your gift uh, 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 just to profit for yourself? Mm. His gift being used to shepherd the people. Mm. Uh, the grace uh, uh, through faith according to Ephesians 2, 89. But we are saved to do good works. Jesus spoke of laying up treasures in heaven in Matthew chapter 6 verse 20. Uh, and so the parable of the talent hints various rewards of uh, those who remain faithful uh, during the pain, the agony, and the preparation. Mm. Uh, can you remain faithful take yeah. a licking and keep on ticking mm. and can you have an attitude like Job though he slay me yeah. yet would I trust him all the days yeah. of my appointed time right. uh, a man that is born of a woman's few days and full of trouble yeah. uh, don't you think just pastoring uh, we don't get no trouble God have mercy. Right. oh my gosh incredible. it's trouble when you shepherd the people of God mm. to, to Feed them. It requires preparation. Uh, pain will come and mm. the struggle will come, uh, but I still got to be a good servant. Mm. People walk out Great. in the church. Uh -huh. Doc, I got you. And a um, couple months later, they don't. Uh -huh. And Elder McFadden, uh, that's, that's a pain that shepherds go through. Just uh, to uh, say, hey, what happened to you? Because I was dependent on you to fulfill the responsibility. Mm. Somebody need to talk back to me. Right. Shepherds right. can't do it by itself. Right. There's a pain, the struggle, and the preparation, but I still got to be a servant. Mm. This man to God, 12 years, been laboring in the church and going through the struggle of the church and Prepare preparation for the church. Mm -hmm. But God has given him some gifts. Yeah. I said that you are grace. Grace means endowed with grace. It's yeah. beautiful, full of grace, and it's honorable. Uh -huh. You grace for this. Nobody else can uh -huh. do it. Uh -huh. They can't vote you out when God have ordained you in. Uh-huh. 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 When, when, when God predestinated yeah. something, yeah. man can't control what God have orchestrated. Yeah. Yeah. You the man for the job. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But then we got the naysayers in the church and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Mm. And who do you see in the church mm. that would try to come against the shepherd? Mm. Why he ain't doing it this way? Why he having this auxiliary? Uh, why I'm not the leader over this? Uh, shut your mouth. Mm. Lord have mercy. Lord have and mercy. begin to pray for your pastor. Mm. Mm. He is the shepherd of the church. Mm. You can't have two shepherds or you will have a two-headed monster. Uh-huh. Lord have mercy. And that's one thing I love about Lady Sutton. She uh -huh. just, she don't try to get in his way. Mm -hmm. She ain't wearing a big hat. She's serving with the man of God. Mm -hmm. She's ministering to the people. Yeah. Yeah. She ain't in the way. She ain't no Jezebel wife. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Preach. Preach. She helped her husband and Preach. she moves out the way. Preach. Hallelujah. Somebody need to talk back to me. Uh -huh. Preach. We got wives want to interfere with the vision. 
But the Bible said, write the vision. Mm -hmm. Make it plain upon tables mm -hmm. that he that read it may run with it for the vision is yet for a point in time. Mm -hmm. It shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, you wait for it. Mm -hmm. It will come to pass Hallelujah. because you are grace for this. Mm -hmm. Pray. Pray. You're grace for this. Yeah. Ah. Let's, let's, let's deal with something. You got the grace. Goodness and faithfulness is essential element for a Christian character. Uh, I, I will try to walk down this passage of scripture, but he gave talents. Uh huh. He Great. gave five, two, and one. Uh, that's a, a five, two, and one. And, 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 and the one that had one talent went and buried it. He buried the gift that God has given him. You can't bury what God had put inside of you. Uh -huh. And God say, oh my God, you old wicked and slowful generation. Uh -huh. And so God is trying to get the people to use their gifts and talents. Don't bury your talent, but use it. Yeah. Uh, five, two, and one. Don't play a hate when somebody got five talents. Right. And you got one. Work that one, baby. Work that one. Some guy got two. Work that two. If you got five, work that five and be happy with it. Frank. That's a word. That's a word. But the one that had five, he went invested and brought five more. The other two, he went invested, brought more. But the other one that had one, he went and buried. Mm. How can you bury something so precious? Lord have mercy. Preach. How can you bury what God has put in you? Oh my God, it's treasure inside of you. Yeah. But you can't bury it in the church. How can bread of life go on for another 12 more years? Mm. You got to use your talents. You got to use your gifts and not bury it. Yeah. Give God a hand praise. Yeah. I'm just getting started, Pastor. Go on, preach. I asked him in the office, "Do I got? How long can I preach? An hour fifteen, hour twenty? He said, "Whatever you want to preach, I'm with you to the end." I said, "Thank you very much, sir, but I won't be that long. I promise you." Listen, listen, listen. When he said, "Well done," uh -huh. our words of recognition and approval. That's good. We, we, we come to church, and when it's all said and done, Minister Raynard, I want God to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Mm. I want him to say, well done. I don't want him to say, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I knew you not. We prophesied in your name. Uh, we did street witness in your name. We did healing in your name. Uh, but your heart wasn't in his name. And so we got to get to the point where we don't bury our gifts and we don't want to have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof. We don't need religious in the church. We need relationship in the yeah, church. Right. Yeah. Religion will take care of itself. You need a relationship in the church. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, uh, the faithful servant is given a large amount of power here and influence. Uh, he said, I will set thee over many things. Uh, yeah. Pastor Sutton, uh, he said, I will set you over bread of life. Uh -huh. I'm going to give you power. And when I'm going to give you power, that means authority. I'm going to give you grace for this. Uh -huh. And so he said, I can trust you because you didn't bury your gift. Mm. Even when you was driving the CTA, <laughs> you was thinking about God. That's right. Somebody need to talk back to me. Uh, he, he, he wrote the vision. Uh, he prayed for the vision. Uh, he waited for the vision. Uh, and now all of a sudden, uh, here it is. Bread of life. He's here. Hallelujah. This is your man servant of God that he have ordained for this church. Uh -huh. Amen. Give God a hand praise. Amen. Uh, so thinking of the number 12 in my notes here. It means perfection of government or rule. Mm. It represents authority or completeness. Mm. Bread of life, I'm going to say this to you. You guys represent perfection, authority, and completeness. That's what the number 12 means. 
There was 12 disciples and 12 apostles and 12 tribes and even crazy Judas Iscariot hung himself. Uh, they had to uh, roll a dice and, and choose another disciple and they chose uh, Matthias uh, because they knew what 12 symbolized. Mm. Judas killed himself and made the disciples 11. So we need to uh, get somebody in here to make 12 so we can have authority and power. Mm. Is this word helping us? Yeah. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Pastor Sudden, faithful means to be full of faith. The Bible said, go from faith to faith and glory mm. to glory. Mm. Full of faith and full of faith. How can you be full of faith to stand in his word? He's not only a pastor, he's a doctor of this word. And so he got to be full of faith so he can be able to feed the people and so the people can be full. Mm. If your shepherd is empty, you will be empty. Mm. Mm. Great. Yeah. So it is very important uh, that you allow your shepherd to, to get rest. Allow your shepherd to have peace. Uh, oh, come on. Somebody need to talk back to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want your shepherd to be able to pray for you with a smile on his face. And so, so he can be, have full strength and full of faith so he can go on for another 12 years. Mm. Somebody need to talk back to me. He has a family. He got a son. He got a wife. And so he need to be on full, but you can't drain your shepherd. You got to pray for your shepherd and get in position and stay there. Pastor, I think it's my assignment is over. I never read that in the Bible where assignments are over. My assignment, I think God is calling me. God ain't calling you because you haven't fulfilled your obligation here. God ain't calling you nowhere but to complete the assignment. Yeah. Finish the work here, bread of yeah. life. Yeah. Do the work. Uh, go yeah. out into the highways and the byways yeah. and compel men yeah. and women about Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Bible says, if the Son of Man be lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. Yeah. We need souls in our church. Uh, we need souls in Abel. Yeah. It's the pandemic. Y'all was unfaithful and not productive before the pandemic. <laughs> Y'all blaming everything. Yeah, some of us, I said this with Abel family. Uh -huh. Some of us today couldn't be Old Testament saints. You can live in the Old Testament. You need New Testament, grace and mercy and all of that good stuff. <laughs> but the Old Testament saints, uh, they didn't even see a sign, but they were still following God. Lord have mercy. They took a lick and kept on ticking. Uh -huh. Going through the wilderness. Even though they complained, they were still going through it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Thank you, Mother. And so, uh -huh. oh, my God. Go through and stop making uh, excuses why you can't use your gifts and your talents. Yeah. This is where it helping us. Great. The man who has no faith is not faithful, but, but faith empty. Mm. Oh, my God. Trusting God down to the end of the journey. Through the storms and through the sunshine and through adversity, prosperity, adversity, through good reports and evil report. Oh, my God. Uh, he still said, I will trust God. Yeah. Through the tough times of 12 years, yeah. you still say, I'm going to trust you. Yeah. Because he put a talent inside of you. Uh -huh. And even though it got rough, the stormy days and the ups and downs day, yeah. I still got a gift that is on the inside yeah. that I got to minister to the bread of life. Yeah. I still got to shepherd yeah. the people. I still got to love people, yeah. even though I know they don't even love me. Mm. Oh, even though I know they talking about me, mm. I still got to love them. You preaching. I know. I, I already you know preaching. people talking you about preaching. me, and they they members of Abel. I already know who they are. <laughs> I still smile and greet them. God bless you. I love you. Just keep paying your tithes and all, I mean, Just keep. That's, that's all. How about that? Uh, and so, so, so God is trying to get us to the point where where we are able to use our gift even at adversity. Mm, there, there got to be a pressing. 
uh, towards that mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, you can't we press another 12 years, brother life. Uh, I believe the church been going on for 50 years. Is that right, Lady Sutton? 50 years y'all been established. Uh, so ever, evidently y'all are doing something right. Come on, y'all. 50 years? Some churches don't make it 50 months. 50 days. But we're talking about 50 years this church has been established. Give yourself a hand praise. I pray 40 more years that Abel can make it to 50. Amen. Now, now we see here that the joy of God to see us growing more and more like himself. He says, to, he said, enter into thy joy of the Lord. In the Bible, if you read your Bible, it does say that. He says, enter into the joy of the Lord. What is the joy of the Lord? The joy of the Lord is us growing more and more like himself. The joy of the Lord is having a pure heart and being true and to love people. He said, enter into my joy. That's the reward is that God is saying that you are looking more like me. You are talking more like me. That's the gifts. He said, enter into my joy. You look like my son. You look like my daughter. You talk like me. You act like me. Enter into my joy. This is where it happened us. A measure of joy accompanies all good and faithful work. Yes, it does. Good and faithful. Uh, Reverend Sutton and Lady Sutton and Bread of Life, you are grace for the struggle, the pain, and the preparation. You are grace for this, uh, but don't give up in the struggle. Uh, don't give up in the preparation. Uh, don't give up in the pain uh, because you are grace for this because you are a good servant. The thing about this is that he's faithful, so you got to be faithful. The Bible said, mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man's life is what? Peace. And so as you guys begin to follow your pastor, you begin to pick up some of the attributes of your shepherd. Uh, you see him on the front line. Uh, when he's going out into the community, he's not just sending folks, he's out there himself. The Great Commission. He's doing the work. And so you see him do it. He just needs you to follow suit. Amen. The struggle sometimes, uh, uh, Pastor, is being willing to be unpopular. Displaying rare courage like the good Samaritan that you are. Uh huh. It's being unpopular. And, and my name is and not in Hollywood. I'm not a Hollywood pastor. But I'm faithful to what God has given me. Come on. I'm not looking at the lights. I'm looking at the light of Christ inside of you. That's what Pastor Sutton is doing. So you can keep strong and so you can keep moving forward. And so you can go higher like never before. Bread of life, God is about to expand this church. Because he's about to expand your thinking. He's about to enlarge your territory. Uh, he's about to get you to think big and, and not mediocre. Think outside of the box. Uh, a good servant uh, begin to think like God. Is this word helping us? Give God some praise. And so the struggle sometimes as pastors has been unpopular. But we still got to be a good Samaritan. The preparation is seeking to know the character of God. In, in our prayer time, in our quiet time, we seeking to know the character of God. Uh, he, oh my God, we seeking him like never before because the people are pulling on us like never before. And we as shepherds seeking God. Oh, the preparation is seeking the character of God to have the attributes of the Father. The pain is good for all of us who are prepared for trials. Oh, my God. And so they, the Bible said they that live godly, we will suffer persecution. 
Oh my God. Uh, and I was thinking of a good scripture to add to this, and it's found in Hebrews 13 and 6. It says, So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Uh, oh my God, the Bible says he's a present help in a time of trouble. And so even as you go through adversity, you've been knowing shepherding that God is going to pull you through. That God is going to give you strength like never before. As you continue to be a good servant, he's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I'm going to make you rule over many. Reason why you expanded, because God can trust you. I can trust you with my people. Oh, my God. Let, let, me, let me turn to Jeremiah. Uh, uh, Jeremiah for a moment. Give me that Bible. For one minute, for one minute. I want to show you something. Since we're helping us. Jeremiah 23. You turn there. This was in my notes, but it was in my spirit. And you better thank God that you don't have a shepherd like Jeremiah 23. You better thank God, I'm telling you. But this is, uh, 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 the woe is destruction is coming. Anytime you see woe in the Bible, destruction or warning is coming. He says, I want Jeremiah 23. Everybody turn to your Bibles. Do, do we still bring Bibles to church or your electronic gadgets? Do anybody still got uh, Maybe I'm the only one still have a hardcover Bible. I know y'all got electronics, and I, I wish maybe one day I put a rule in that able, no more electronics using. Maybe we go back to the hardcover because y'all be on y'all shopping networks. Y'all be Uber Eats, and y'all be on Amazon.com. And y'all supposed to be on your Bible app. Maybe one day I install a rule like that. Say hardcover Bibles only. No electronic gadgets. They'll keep you guys off your Facebook and, and, and YouTube. When you come to the word, when you come to church, you, you got to take off all the social media. So I need everyone to tune in to Jeremiah 23. Take it off your Facebook and put it on Jeremiah 23. Put the Bible app on there. Bible app. Listen to this. Jeremiah 23. Prophet Dana, this messed me up as I was studying it earlier uh, uh, this week. He said, woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my what? Of my pastors. This, this, you are God's people. He just used us to shepherd you, to pour into you, and to feed you. He said, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a destruction and warning coming. Woe to these shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus said the Lord of God of Israel, Against the shepherds who feed my people, you have scattered my flock. Driven them away and not attended to them. This man attend to everyone. If he, don't, if he can't make it, he's sending somebody to represent him. He's attending the needs of the people. But these shepherds didn't attend to the people of Israel. Instead of feeding them, they was poisoning them. Not attend to them. Behold, I will attend to you for the evil of your doing, said the Lord. But I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their fold, the sheepfold. I believe in the new gospel, uh, uh, in new, uh, uh, it talks about Jesus was on the scene. He said, I seen sheep. Scattered without having a shepherd. People are not in church. It's not because of other church folks. It's because of the fivefold. They have scattered the people. They got church hurt in the church. And the church is a hospital to heal. To, to, to heal, to, to build up, to strengthen, to edify. I don't come to church for you to judge me of what I wear. But we have hurted the people and they are scattered. 
But I, he said, verse 3, but I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their foe, and they shall be fruitful and increase. That sounds like what we just read in Matthew chapter 25 with the, the, the good talent. It was increase. It was fruitful. I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them. All of a sudden, here come Dr. David Sutton. I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them and they shall fear no more. Nor will they be dismayed, nor they shall be lacking, said the Lord. Y'all hear that? You have a shepherd that don't scatter the flock. You have a shepherd that attend to the flock. You have a shepherd that love the flock. You have a shepherd that pray for the flock. You have a shepherd that is concerned about the flock. You have a shepherd that is concerned about your children. How they doing in school. Uh, you have a shepherd concerned about your grandchildren. You have a shepherd concerned about your marriage. Are y'all hearing me? He's hands on. Give God a praise. Pastor, my friend, thank you for being a great role model for me. For me to follow. For me to see a man that is still feeding. Even in a pandemic, he's still doing what he needs to do. Whether it be Zoom or the phones or the, the television or whatever. He's making sure that he attend to the flock. Give God a hand praise. Pastor Sutton and Lady Sutton, can you please stand? I have something prophetic that I want to share with you in my closing. Hallelujah. Can we play me something, musicians? Something soft if you can. And if y'all can come, I don't want to block the TV. Ladies son, if you come over there, I want to block the camera. I want to say this to you. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. You commit and you don't quit. God is going to restore and elevate you into a greater position. Play me some minstrels. And what Adam have lost before the fall, he's going to elevate you to a new level of spiritual perfection and maturity as four grown sons and daughters, said the Lord of hosts. God is going to do for you, Pastor David Sutton and Lady Sutton, is put you in a new position of total victory in every area of your life. As strong as victorious soldiers of Jesus Christ. God is saying that I'm setting you up to deal with any battle that will come your way, said the Lord. That you are grace for this. I'm raising up your level of expectation as you're about to expand. Not, oh my God, to, you're about to expand to a new dimension like never before. You're about to think and your church is about to think. And God told me to tell you that he's sending you help. Help to build you up, to encourage you, to strengthen you, to empower you. Men and women of God that will pray for you and not talk about you. Yeah, come on, y'all. Y'all need to pray, pray, pray. God is going to restore everything that Satan has stolen from you. As a result of your new position of maturity as full grown sons and daughters. Uh, you're about to be victorious like never before. And you're about to go into the enemy's camp and take what belongs to you. God is re going to restore full control of your mind, your thoughts, and your imagination like never before. Said the Lord of hosts. Come on, give God a praise. Give God a praise. I hear restoration. I hear he's restoring you like never before. People don't see 
when you break down emotionally on the inside. They don't see the tears that fall from your face. But God is saying for every tear that have came out of your face, uh, I'm about to restore it. And I'm about to give you a blessing. I'm about to overflow you. And your mind uh, is going to wonder in awe, what kind of God is this? That you're about to prosper in the midst of a pandemic, said the Lord of hosts. Give God a hand praise. Come on. Give God a hand praise. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. All the leaders of Bread of Life stand. All the leaders. If you're a leader in this house in any capacity, please stand. And I have something for you, said the Lord of hosts. It is time for you, bread of life, to move out, to press on, to battle for, for restoration. It's time for you, leaders of bread of life, uh, to put into action what you have learned here through the man and woman of God. Bread of life, the battle cry of the spirit is now moving into the battlefield. And God said, I have raised up leaders that will be able to stand against the adversity that will come against the man and woman of God. Just, oh my God, tell my shade, you're about to uplift the man of God, just like Aaron and Hur did for Moses. Uh, as long as Moses' arms was lifted up, any kind of kites can come God is saying that you're about to lift up your leaders uh, in spiritual battle like never before your prayer life leaders is about to increase thus said the Lord of hosts uh, I'm speaking to every leader under the sound of my voice that your prayer life is about to increase because you got to lift up the man and woman of God now give God a hand praise take your seats Amen. Pastor David and Lady Sutton, you are grace for this. She could have There's a, a warfare that Lady Sutton go through because she had to share her husband. The nights, he's not at home, he's at church. And the Lord told me, Lady Sutton, that he's going to continue to comfort you. He's going to continue to strengthen you because you are grace for this. I know the times you want to be with your husband, but you understand the call of God on his life. You understand the demand that is on his life. And God told me to tell you because of your faithfulness and no interference from you, he's about to reward you like never before. I see your own personal business. Whatever you, is the idea that you have is about to take flight. It only have your name on it. This business only have your name on it. Thank you. And it's about to happen. And God said for this business... He's bringing you in divine contact with divine people that take you to divine destination for your new business. And, and, and bread life going to be okay when you're not here because you are operating in your new business. Something that you desire that you put on hold for the bread of life family. Y'all not hearing me. Something she put on hold. God said, I'm taking off the pause button. And you're about to start what you about to what you pray for and what you desire, it will come to pass. Said the Lord of hosts. Give God a hand praise. Come on, come on. Stand up for your awesome leaders. Stand up for your leaders. Encourage your leaders. Pray for your leaders intercede for your leaders they are great men and great women of the Lord come on, come on bread of life family come on 
We honor you guys today. We honor you guys today. Amen, amen. Take your seats in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bread of Life family, thank you for the opportunity of being here today. A faithful and good servant. That's who they are. Amen. Don't bury your talent, your gifts. Use your gifts to advance the kingdom of God. I thank you for the opportunity and the privilege here of being here. But is there a, 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 a certain uh, seed that they need to sow, Pastor and Lady Sutton? No. Can I have some of your members? Oh, my God. Say that again. They do what? I am so happy to hear that as a shepherd. Oh, they, for everybody in the foyer, thank you. Everybody that is streaming live, thank you for taking care of the man and woman of God. Your shepherd said you guys do a great job of taking care of them. Give yourself a hand, praise. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Sutton. I'm going to turn the mic over back to this man of God. Can we do better now? Can we give God some praise for this man of God who's truly used in such a powerful way? Come on, we need to do better than that. Thank you for allowing the Lord to use you as a vessel uh, prophecy is is active and real in scripture and is one of the gifts of the spirit and now it's one of the reasons why I say I got to connect with him because I can see how God is using him in such a mighty way in the gifts sometimes churches has a way of saying God only worked this way and not that way. Can, can someone say that God is bigger than us? He's much bigger than our thinking, our philosophy, and even our theology. And the way that you determine prophecy is not only foretelling, where you proclaim the word of God, which he did, but also in foretelling, where he or she confirms what God is doing within you. And so much of what he was speaking was already working within us. Like my wife in regards to entrepreneurship, she want to work with her niece and her sister in, in, in starting their own business. That's what they have been talking about. <laughs> and even with the Gwen's Closet, uh, it's one of the things that was on her spirit. Gwendolyn Collins, who was her mother, was now going home to be with the Lord. It was in her spirit. And so to see God just speak to someone who had nothing, no knowledge, no clue. That's confirmation. That's prophecy. That's prophecy. And then just experiencing fatigue and tiredness. I said this before, as a pastor, you have to realize that you are human. Although people treat you like you're superhuman or even sometimes like a villain. Uh, that you are human and that you need to be restored and I kid you not, um, I had just told my wife, I just need a break. Just need. And all this morning, I'm getting, all throughout this week, I just sent, a someone sent me a text who, who doesn't live in the city of Chicago, lives in Georgia, babe, wow. and just sends me an encouraging uh, text, just wow. to be encouraged. And then someone this morning, I found on my desk a shawl. Uh, from one of uh, the uh, doctoral students uh, that I have the privilege of um, helping and advising sends me a prayer shawl. Wow. And just one is, just, I just find that stuff for restoration, <laughs> uh, things for uh, just helping you to be renewed. And he had a nice letter that I won't uh, belabor uh, this time, but just to let you know that God use you <laughs> and truly, truly confirm uh, what, come on, we could do better than that. This, this is God. 
<clears throat> and I thank God. Let me just say this real quick because we're going to move through, through stories. But I want to thank God for Brother Life. Uh, I don't have to preach until September because I have ready and able servants here, servants of God who are gifted. And I could go away and not have to worry about anything. Um, that's truly a testament to Brother Life over 50 years of service uh, here in the community and how God has grown up this place to be able to do and work like a machine. And I don't have to worry about a thing. And so I just bless the Lord for the privilege of serving as leader of Brother Life here in West Inglewood. Come on, give God some praise uh, for that. Uh, uh, people who are great thinkers, big thinking outside of the box. And I won't go too much into history. Brother Life, no, I already, I always talk about things uh, that Brother Life have accomplished over the past and, and separating it, but, uh, and, and celebrating that. But even as I think about people who think outside of the box and doing things that uh, people never thought of, rather than having an addition to a building across the street that was already built, there was a leader and people who followed thought outside the box to build something from the ground up or across the street of which is paid for. And then when you talk about increase, I tell you, I wake up in the morning, the Lord would speak to me in the morning many times through song. And when you talk about increase, that will be in my spirit. I work, wake up in the morning about increase my territory. Increase, and when you were speaking of increase, the Lord just reminded me of what He already told me beforehand. And I have the audacity to just give God praise ahead of time. Anybody had the audacity to praise God ahead of time to know that His word is faithful and true and would not return to Him void, but accomplish all that He desired it to accomplish? So I'm just saying all that to say thank God from whom all blessings flow. Can we just bless the Lord right now? For we serve a God who is awesome and mighty. Can we just give him our awesome and mighty praise? I know it's late. We go, we've gone longer than we used, but can we just put time aside and just bless the Lord sacrificially and just tell him you're good, you're awesome, you're mighty. You can't do no wrong. You're faithful. You're great, Lord. And we just wanted to acknowledge you on this day that we love you. And perhaps there's someone out there who do not know the Lord in the pardon of their sins. We want to make sure that you have that opportunity to know him for yourself. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is that person who trusts in him. Anybody believe and know that God, he is good. When you taste him, you can't get enough of him. He says he is the bread of life. He is the living water. He is that manna from heaven. We thank God for him who satisfies our souls. And so all you have to do is ask them to come into your life and to save you from what? Save you from your sins, all of our sins. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know what that means? Even now we're falling short and we're living by the mercy of God. Anybody know what mercy is? Mercy is God withholding that which we deserve, which is judgment. So every breath we take is God's mercy. The Bible says the mercy of God are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. So even now you're breathing because he has held back justice. And this is the good news. For though the Bible says the wage of sin is death, but thank God for the conjunctions. The gift of God is what? Eternal life through who? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Anybody thank God for this gift? The greatest gift known to humanity. And brother life, you already know what I always ask. What do you do with a gift? You receive it and say what? Thank you very much. Anybody want to bless the Lord for this gift that keeps on giving? And it's just as simple as this. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon, upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you have to do is call him. You could call him right where you are, where you're driving, out on the street, whether you're at home, at Bedside Baptist, whether you're on a phone conference line, or you are here in person. We want to offer Christ to you. Is there anyone? If you have any questions or comments, please call us here at 773-778-4121. If there's someone here who would like to come forth, you're in the midst of two great churches, Able Ministries on the west side and Bread of Life on the south side. We definitely are willing and able to share with you this Jesus that we know that can save anybody. Anybody believe that? Come on, give God some more praise. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord.
And also, really quickly, we want to make sure that we offer prayer requests. Anybody who uh, desires prayer, you can stand where we are, where, right where you are. If you want to uh, uh, sit, that's fine. If you can stand, you can stand. Uh, just acknowledge you need prayer. Um, and uh, we just want to pray with you. Uh, we know we're in the midst of these times of social distancing, but anybody know that uh, the pandemic can't stop God's, uh, uh, God's people's prayers. The prayers of the righteous uh, availeth much. And so uh, why don't we stand? And we stand if you can. And we just want to just connect. You can't, you may not, you don't have to hold hands unless you trust, you know, the person that you be you with, you know, that they wash their hands. And, you know, we do have uh, uh, hand sanitizer. We do have face masks. And so we want to make sure that, you know, we're providing the safest experience for you as possible. And we want to be uh, just thankful. We, we, uh, anybody remember Reverend Charmaine Shine who preached a powerful word here at Brother Life on Women's Day? You know, that devil always have a way of trying to quench someone's fire. And her son was shot three or four times. Uh, but do you know every bullet uh, that went in him missed vital organs? And he had the audacity to be at home right now. Y'all y'all don't hear me. <laughs> How many bullets rev? Four bullets. And the man is at home right now. Uh, his name is Lawrence and faithful. Uh, I think he plays the drums. He plays in the band. And his, so he's a servant. He's not caught up in things that people like to try to have people to be caught up in. Uh, uh, he's doing what God called him to do. But anybody believe and know that when it's not your time, it is not your time. And God is able. I know y'all know about God is able. And so the other young man that was shot also, he's still in the hospital, but he is still here, still alive. And we believe God is faithful to help him to recover also. Can the church say amen? Uh, be in prayer for Mark Robinson. Uh, I think he's on his second or third treatment now. How? And on his second treatment, a chemo. And uh, uh, what you say, Erica? He takes it on Tuesdays. I want you all to be in prayer for Mark Robinson. If y'all knew his story, Lord have mercy. But God has brought him through and steadily bringing him through. That though the doctors say he has cancer, anybody believe that God is able to heal? And that's what we believe. So you all pray for him every Tuesday. If it really brings it to your mind, pray for him. Also, uh, pray for the other soldier, Kamaya Hoskins, who's been in and out of the hospital uh, 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 with with, with um sickle cell, but she is such a fighter that even in the midst of the uh, pandemic and even having COVID-19, the Lord's still keeping her and she's steadily fighting. I'm just saying, I know you got to go home. I'm just saying God is in the midst of us. Prayer works. Prayer works. Anybody believe that? Prayer works. It works. It works. It works. It works. I see a council. Am I correct? I see a council survivor. Uh, uh, Sister, Sister Diamond, uh, uh, Sister Diamond, you just wave your hand. You can testify to know that prayer. Who went through the same thing with chemo, but look at her now. Sister Nella back there in the hallway. I know she can wave her hand. I know she got there. You just wave your hand, Sister Nella. Sister Nella, you know God is able. God is able. Don't you dare doubt him. And, and, and Pastor James Blair, I know we've been working you, but I'm going to ask for you to pray over. Would it be all right just for you to pray over us? And then after you, after Pastor Blair has prayed, we're going to have our communion, and we promise to let you go. Is that all right? Pastor Blair, please come and just pray. Is there the mic? Okay, thanks so much, Rev. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the healing. We thank you for the restoration. We thank you for your word, Father. We thank you, Father, for the Bread of Life family and for Able Ministry family. We pray that we will continue to go in strength and wisdom yeah. and revelation and knowledge, God. Let your word continue to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, God. Uh, Father, we thank you for what you're going to do, Father. In the name of Jesus, one thing, one thing that I desire of the Lord, yeah. that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Father, now to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with the exceeding joy, let the church of Jesus Christ say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And so now we want to uh, continue in service uh, by communion. So if you do not have communion, you can be seated. You, uh, and, and if you'd like to take communion, uh, please, please raise your hand so that uh, Deacon Tyrone can uh, give you uh, a communion cup. Uh, we appreciate you all working with us. This is an exciting, exciting time. And yours is right there, Pastor, right there. And I think you all, okay, you're taking care of him? Yeah, please raise your hand if you don't have a, a communion cup. We want to make sure we supply you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. But this is what we are all about. Yes, sir. The redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Who died on the cross for our sins. And you all know what the word said for if there's no shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sins. And so I know I always, I mess with Chris sometimes and I ask him if he could have that camera directed above my head on that cross behind me. Hey. For that is what we're about. Uh, and Chris is, he's on the ball. We thank God. Can we give God some praise for Chris, the Bread of Life tech team, the band? who are on the ball. And so it's during this time before we pray that while uh, we're in a spirit and attitude of remembering what Jesus Christ did for us, that if there's anything that is in your heart, anything between you and a mother, another brother or sister, uh, uh, the Bible says to, to leave uh, your gift at the altar. Yes, sir. That's the word. Go in and reconcile with your brother and sister and then come back continue to serve for the Bible speaks of how if we don't forgive one another he's not going to forgive us and that is the heart of the gospel and why Jesus did it and he knows us he knows that if, if, if he doesn't have nothing in place for us to remember what he did we will forget and so he said to, uh, to do this in remembrance of me until he comes back again so let us pray. Oh God, how we thank you, how we love you. We thank you for the blood that never ever loses its power. Go to the highest mountain or the lowest valley who will never lose its power. Nothing is beyond your reach. I pray right now for your blood to, to go through the screens, through even the phones remotely to those who are, uh, are watching us from abroad. Lord, I pray that as they bring out the cup and the, and the bread, Lord, that you will sanctify it, set it apart. Those who are on phone conference, Lord, we pray that you will set it apart, Lord. Those who are here in person, Lord, we pray that you will set the bread and cup apart. It's not just a piece of bread without leaven or, 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 or some stale juice, but this represents Presents your body and your blood. We pray right now, oh God, that you will cleanse our hearts and our minds, remove anything that uh, within us that is not of you, Lord. I pray that you will help us to reconnect if we're disconnected, especially from you, as well as one toward the other, Lord. May you help us to connect from hand to hand, heart to heart, so that your blood may flow, flow through freely so that we all can do this with hearts of thanksgiving in remembrance of you and Lord we be extra careful to give you all the praise glory and honor for us in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray that all God's people say amen and Paul says that which was given to me I will give unto you that in the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread and said, break and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also, he took the cup saying, this cup is the New Testament of my blood. This drink ye in remembrance of me.
For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes again. Come on, give God some praise. And I keep thinking about that song, I Know It Was the Blood. I know it, if I could sing right now, Lord have mercy. You all better pass out these baskets so we can <laughs> put away the cups before the pastor try to sing. But the Bible says make a joyful noise. I can make a noise now. <laughs> but uh, you can pass out the basket. Uh, will you all relief, uh, have the basket at the door? Okay, so what we're going to do as the song is being played and the benediction is given, uh, you can leave uh, your cups at the basket there. And also for those who like to give uh, an offering, you can um, uh, leave a gift if you can. If you don't, no problem at all. Uh, Sister Neller's back there too with the basket. But may we stand to our feet. And I'm going to ask for uh, Elder uh, Kalita Blair, if you wouldn't mind just to uh, uh, give us uh, any words of encouragement you like, if you like to, as well as the benediction. Can we give God some praise for the First Lady? of Able Ministries, and we thank God for you, we love you, and we look forward to seeing you all again on our next Sunday. The Lord said the same. Elder Blair, come on. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on and give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Come on and celebrate 12 years. Amen. And we want to say thank you again for allowing Able Ministries to come and celebrate with you on today and keep on doing what God called you to do. Amen. Amen. Father God, we just thank you and we praise you. We lift you up. We magnify you, God. We thank you, God, for the sweet spirit that is in this place. As we go home, take us, God, to our destination safe, God. In the name of Jesus, let it be no mechanical failures, God. Hallelujah. We thank you. No breakdowns, God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, no tire flats, God. Yes. Take us home, God. Hallelujah. And let us find our house safe. And God, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we say amen until we meet again. Come on and give God a hand, praise. Hallelujah. 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 And we say amen. Amen.